morning to everyone. Uh, we had a surprise rain, which I guess uh, you know kind of uh, made travel here perhaps a bit more difficult. Uh, anyway, so it's uh, it's it's really a great uh, a pleasure to be uh, chairing this session, which is really a storytelling. What we want to do is tell you a story, a story that we are really excited about. It's a, it's a story of how research and practice transcreates uh, knowledge to improve practice in a relentless, continuous way. And this is an overarching theme that has described my personal life because I, I'm a hybrid person. I sort of have always moved between the in-between space of research and practice because I truly believe that research is extremely powerful in terms of being able to contribute to practice, but to be able to, to, be able to uh, make that happen, it's really important that researchers really engage very deeply in understanding practice. Because pract you don't only contribute to practice, <coughs> research itself gets enriched by understanding practice. And that is a central theme that, that I have been kind of until now working on and I wish to be working on for the rest of, rest of my personal career. Uh, and I think Bangladesh in particular is a rich ground in terms of creating that connectivity because we have so much of rich practice. And, and yet the connection between research and practice remains to be not where it can be. And I think that's you know kind of one way in which we can find our role, a very unique role, in the overall knowledge domain. A very special, unique role because, and this is something I want to also talk about, that I think we need to find our own space. And I think our own space is not a theological uh, understanding of how we fit in the value chain of knowledge. We're not going to be a B category Harvard. We have to create our own space. And there are many dimensions of this, our own space. But one of the very important dimension is this research practice, this praxis uh, domain. And I think we have not really focused on that domain as much as we could. And I think that is a big challenge that I would like to basically throw here. Anyway, so let me, let me get to the uh, sort of uh, the presentation. As I said, it, it's basically a story. So what, what we'll try and do over the next 40 minutes or so is give you a sense of how research enriches and is in turn enriched by the ongoing engagement with practice and practitioners. And I want to distinguish between practice and practitioners. Because practitioners are of course embedded in practice, but they are also distinct. Their dynamics are very, very distinct. Uh, and, and, and they are also very important actors. And, and researchers and practitioners together create practice. And I think it's really, uh, so I hope we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, we want to talk about the pleasures and pains of navigating between the interdependent space of research and practice. Uh, you know, we talk about independence of research. I talk about interdependence of research. Because I think there's nothing called pure independence. You know, it, it's not an ivory tower independence. It's an interdependence. And, and, and that interdependence domain is always much more complex. And that's what makes it really ultra poor graduation model. It started off as a targeting the ultra poor program of BRAC. Today we call it ultra poor graduation program. Globally it is known as ultra poor graduation model. It is, it is, it is almost as powerful a model as microcredit was basically. So I think the creation of a global model and the politics of that whole knowledge domain uh, in terms of how we position ourselves within that knowledge domain, how do we navigate that, 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 that whole global politics of knowledge domain as you create global public goods, I think is something that we also need to understand. So those are the three kind of big kind of areas and you know, the big questions are very much related to those th three areas. I don't want to go too much into that, but I think very briefly, the first big question that I hope we'll, we'll talk about is, is how can we come together to lead this whole this whole, what I call the frontier of the practice of critical praxis of development, right? And I think this is something Bangladesh can really take a leadership role in. And we, I think the development studies, development economics, 
really needs to focus on how it can, how we can create this unique position for Bangladesh to be this leader in the critical praxis of development. The second is, I think, we should, I think, and I think related to this is how can we find our unique place, which is not a teleological value chain approach to knowledge that we are in the, you know, we just acquire skills of certain types and that's going to make us, you know, kind of progress in a value chain oriented way. I, I mean, I think. I think definitely there are new skills we need to definitely acquire, but to what purpose, to what end, and what is that unique position we're trying to create? That I think is very important to be very, very clear about. And thirdly, and this is obviously a very, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, uh, you know, important, uh, you know, kind of area for us, is as you will hear, you will see there's a, there's a rich evidence that we have created, which has contributed to program and have been, and we have been enriched by program. But it, and it has gone global, but it hasn't really connected to the national policy as much as it needs to. And I think there we need to really, you know, how do we really uh, uh, do this in a way that the national policy connection is sort of strengthened? And I think we'd love to hear thoughts on that. <coughs> so those are kind of three, I mean, overarching my role was to essentially frame uh, the keynote. And now I'll hand, oh, sorry, before I move on, uh, this is the basic timeline uh, of the of the of the whole uh, uh, the ultra core research journey. Uh, there was this 2002 to 2006 phase where we primarily focused on exploration, discovery. We did quasi experimental <coughs> impact evaluation. This was primarily a phase of discovery. We did lots of multi method exploratory research, formative in nature primarily, and some operational research. Not so much a great focus on impact evaluation, because that was not the biggest focus in the initial five years of the ultra poor program in terms of research. Then there was this phase of 2017 to 18 where we where we realized that we you know we have a model that we know is quite effective and robust, and we were scaling it up, and that's when we started really focusing on the you know, you know, kind of stepping up the rigor of the impact evaluation. To 2007 and 18, these 12 plus years have been a period when we have actually conducted the longest running, the largest experimental evaluation of a ultra core program in the world, right? And we will talk about that. And we are very proud of this partnership we've had with London School of Economics uh, in, in, in this, in this, in, in this, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, in this phase. And we have been private. We are now looking at longer term outcomes, intergenerational outcomes, because we have 12 plus years of panel data. 2019 onward, we have revised our model based on changes in Bangladesh. We'll talk more about that. And 2019 onward, we are forming a new form of partnership. The, the first partnership with the London School of Economics continues. In 2019 onward, we are forming a new partnership to really, because in 2017, 7 and 18, this period, we primarily looked at the overall impact of the model, right? It was a very aggregate level impact. It was a simple uh, uh, experimental design. Now we're focusing on the mechanisms through which this impact has been delivered, right? So 2009 onward, our focus is on discovering mechanisms and really focusing on mechanisms and some questions that can, you can only ask when things are at scale. Uh, and this is an also very exciting phase uh, with new uh, research partnerships, we have sort of uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, sort of starting with uh, uh, with uh, with Yale University, with Northwestern, with technical assistance from IPA, uh, and and this is also going to be ex another exciting phase of 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 the of the journey and, and the evolving story. Uh, I think I'll stop here and I'll, I'll just uh, ask Narayan to take you through the rest of the presentation. Narayan.